Okay, so if, if you're going to play in a competitive event and you're maybe feeling that nervousness, you're feeling that wobbly feeling in your stomach or the tension in your shoulders or maybe just the overactivity in your head of, oh, I'm going to play terrible today, my swing is off, I'm not very confident with my game. There's a, you're thinking about your opponent, you're thinking about the score, you're thinking about the weather, you're thinking about how you played in this event last week or last year. All of these thoughts can obviously occur at any given time. So let's just say, for example, you're playing in a competitive event and your mind is not in the right place, right? Maybe you're thinking about, the, well, Linda and Jeff, I'll just throw this out to you. Give me some kind of thoughts that you might have going into competition that could potentially be working against you. <laughs> right? Not playing well, right? So you're already starting to envision or imagine hitting bad shots, right? And you haven't even gone to the golf course yet, potentially. I'm just saying, right? So what do we need to, so, so how would you sum up that state of mind if you're going to the course on that particular day? How would you say you feel if you're having negative swing thoughts? How would you summarize that? Apprehensive. Apprehensive, right? uncertain, self-doubt, negative, right? All of these thoughts could be going through your head. Nervous, okay? I used to have a crippling, crippling fear of public speaking. So I understand nervousness and fear, and when I started doing what I do and overcame my fear of public speaking and started focusing on, on working with golfers, my confidence on the first team went up dramatically because I didn't feel that nervousness as much because I had faced my fear and now I speak for a living. Okay, so it took time, it took conditioning, it took practice, but it also took having the mindset to go out and actually do it. So now if we're thinking about the wrong things going to play in a competitive golf outing, how can we reverse that to have a more positive state of mind if we're thinking about envisioning negative shots or having negative thoughts? We talked about relax, okay, but what, what other kind of a mindset could we have going out to play to ensure that we feel 100% ready mentally? Give me some examples of, of how you could have a, a very positive mental game strategy. Have a, have a, let's just have fun approach. Have fun. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. What else? Right, because we have no control over what happens after we hit a shot, right? There are so many things that can go. We could hit a great shot and get a bad bounce, a gust of wind. Somebody could cough or sneeze in our backswing and throw us off. There's all kinds of things that can happen. The only thing we have control over is how we're thinking, okay? So it builds going from negative thoughts, uncertainty, self-doubt, nervous to have fun. Right? You're talking about two extreme differences in mindsets, okay? Now, the key is to remind yourself to have fun when you hit that first bad shot. That's the challenge. You can say, ah, oh, this stuff is stupid. I mean, this doesn't work. I'm not having any fun out here. This is like work. I'm playing terrible, right? Of course, those thoughts can come into play, but the challenge is to constantly remind yourself to have fun. I love it. I love it because too many of us get way too serious with this game and we lose sight of the fact that it is a game, especially in competition, okay? I have a student who uh, was not going to play in his club championship at Orchard Park last weekend, Orchard Park Country Club, because it's something just happened to his swing. Okay, I tried getting him in, in with the lesson with Ren, but it was just a very, very short window. It, it never occurred, but, and he was able to, to, to go out before the, the club championship and get his swing back a little bit. And I talked to him every day during the club championship's three-day event. He ended up playing very well. Okay. But he was this close, this close to not playing because his swing was off. He's about a seven handicap, okay? He's been at the club for a number of years. So there's the anxiety of what if I don't play well in front of all of my friends and all of the other members, right? Has anybody ever experienced that before? Okay, right? We are so concerned with what other people are thinking that it makes, us, it, it, makes it impossible to focus on your own game. It can be paralyzing, it can be crippling, okay? So he plays in the tournament, plays very, very well, shoots to, I think, just 
actually almost on even with his handicap, which is obviously very good for a club championship or any competitive event. And he goes out and he has a great time. Now think about what, what, what happens if he decides not to play. Okay, so he says, I'm gonna pass on it for this year. What is that doing to his confidence level for right now? And then what's gonna happen next year for the club championship? Bless you. Potentially he could go through the same thing again, right? Oh, you know what? I'm just I, you know, I'm gonna skip it again this year. I'm still not feeling where I need to be. The game is about having fun, okay? So even if your game is a little bit off and you go out and play in a competitive event, reminding yourself to have fun in every shot, I guarantee you, is going to help. Now you might think this is so elementary and so simple, how could this possibly help me? Because golf can be very complex, right? Because we make it complex and we overthink it and we have too many of these guys. Right? Red nose. Look out. <laughs> Look out. What is this? Anybody, can anybody see? An ant. Ant. Thank you. Right? Okay, so in my 18 holes book, I talk about how you must, you must, in order to play the best golf you've ever played, you must learn how to stop the ants. What the heck are ants? Right? Does anybody know what ANT stands for? It's an acronym. Skip. Automatic negative thought. How did you know that? I watched some of your stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay? Automatic negative thoughts. Take a guess, and I didn't make this up, it's statistically proven. Take a guess what percentage of our thoughts are negative and occurring automatically. 60. Higher than 90? What did you say? 90? 90, it's, yeah. 90, it's almost 90%. Wow. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> used to be me too. I can relate. Trust me. I remember receiving this statistic about seven years ago, and I, and I thought, man, who the heck could have that many negative? That's crazy. That's crazy. But it's not me. Two days later, it's about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm wide awake consumed with something that was going on in my life. I can't even remember what. And I remember thinking to myself, at that time, I said, you know what, I'm just like everybody else. Okay? So, I don't think any of us are above having negative thoughts. Obviously, some of us have more than others, and we also have a tendency to let those negative thoughts really, really multiply quickly when we're playing the game of golf. There's just something about golf that brings out the ants in all of us. Right? We've all been there, we've all experienced. Now we need to learn how to stop those guys. And the first way that you do it is to play golf with a mental game strategy or a high level plan every single time you go to the golf course. 